Discover has been on my radar since 2021. While I have a very small position in a diversified portfolio, I'm considering a much more concentrated position potentially with this company. Discover Financial Services offers what is, in my opinion, a pretty unique prospect. It's a combination of both quality of business and potential undervaluation. It's been on my radar, as I mentioned before, since 2021. I have a tiny little bit of Discover in a portfolio I'm building um, that's highly diversified, so I won't have much Discover in there. But I am considering it for a more concentrated position uh, because of the fact that it's offering this compelling combination that I almost can't ignore at this point. It's a matter for me of figuring out why it is that the market seems to be shying away from giving this company what it would seem to be a valuation that is appropriate for a business like this. When you look at, for example, Amex, it trades at multiples that are more than double what Discover is trading for right now. Now, it could be because Amex has a wider moat and you know, has clientele who maybe wouldn't be as affected by something like a recession, which could be coming here soon. But recessions are temporary, and Discover, I think, in the long run, still offers an interesting opportunity. Now, let me show you some interesting numbers. Here's the revenue charts for the last 10 years from Macro Trends. As you can see, revenue has definitely gone up quite a lot over the last 10 years with some bumps in the road due to COVID. The bottom chart shows the year over year quarterly growth. And you can see in 2020, there were some quarters of negative growth, as well as a giant spike in uh, looks like 2021, with some pullbacks in 2022. However, currently, it seems like they're probably getting back on the right track if we're to believe this moves forward. They actually do have earnings coming up today. Uh, has not yet been released at the time I'm recording this, but I think that earnings will tell us if they're getting back to growth or if they still have some issues to work through. With the coming recession, the market may be anticipating some challenges in growing revenue for Discover since they cater to let's say, some people who are newer and just starting out, a slightly younger crowd who's less established. Recessions, however, are temporary, and this company provides a 3% dividend yield with a payout ratio of under 20% of earnings, with an astounding dividend growth of 18% as of the last dividend hike. That's a pretty beefy dividend with a lot of room to grow. Personally, I don't see why this doesn't get more attention from the dividend growth community. That being said, the dividend isn't everything. There are a few other points to consider when it comes to Discover Financial. One such consideration is that unlike its competitors Visa and MasterCard, Discover actually holds the balances in-house and essentially functions as a bank. This means that the balances on the credit cards, as well as some of their private student loans and the personal loans that they issue to their customers, are subject to default risk on the part of Discover. And since Discover does appeal to, say, the younger crowd, a lot of people I know of get Discover as their first credit card. Well, in the event of a recession, who gets the hardest hit in the job market? It's usually the newer, less experienced people. And if they experience high unemployment, their default rate may increase, and that increases risk to Discover and their balance sheet. Setting aside recession fears for a moment, I wanted to turn my attention to the share buybacks. The last few years, they have been madly buying back shares. They were reducing the share count substantially, and I'm glad they're doing so while the multiple is low. 
I love it when companies buy back cheaper shares. And frankly, I think single digit PE for Discover is quite cheap. Also, over the last decade, they've grown their dividend from 20 cents per share up to a massive 70 cents per share, more than tripling it in the last decade. And their payout ratio, again, is still only about 19%. Also, while I would never consider buying or selling anything just because analysts like it, I think it is worth pointing out that the current share price is lower than the low analyst expectation for the 12-month price forecast on this. So it would seem that the consensus there would be that Discover probably is worth a bit more than what it trades for today. Is it worth the high target of 135? Well, I can't say that for sure. And before we get into some of my final thoughts on Discover, I'd like to remind everybody to like the video, comment below with your own opinions, and of course, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. I'm getting close to 1000 now, and that's a big goal. Can't wait to reach it. Now, without further ado, the analysts also give it a consensus buy rating. Now, it's not a screaming buy, according to this, but it is the, re the direction that they're leaning. Now, I'm also, in a similar sense, kind of leaning that direction, but I'm still going to do a little bit more digging and probably wait on this earnings release today. The expectations going forward for earnings are for 2023 to be an up year on revenue, but down on earnings, with 2024 being small growth in both and 2025 seeing small growth in rev, large in earnings. I'll be curious to see if anything changes with regards to the outlook of the company or management's guidance as of today's earnings. My conclusion is that I think that this stock is massively overlooked by the market. I'm really struggling to figure out why. Maybe one of you out there in the audience can comment and tell me what it is that is causing both the dividend growth community and the value communities to overlook this stock. Because it seems to have a compelling combination of factors that would make it a very interesting position to hold in a portfolio. That being said, I don't think anybody should run out and buy it just because I'm starting to like the looks of it and the analysts happen to agree with me. Remember, analysts can be and often are wrong about things like their price targets and their buy and sell ratings. They kind of go with the crowd a little bit and you shouldn't hang your hat on anything anyone says. Remember that this is up to you, okay? When you put your money to work, you should be the one that feels like you're confident and know that you understand what's going on. That being said, it's time to wrap this thing up. Big reminder, to discuss this and other stocks, join me on Discord, link in the description. It's free. I just like to have conversations about these things. Also, check me out every Saturday night at 8 p.m. on Cashflow Kings Live. The YouTube channel's link is in the description. And any other link that could help me out also is in the description. Take it easy, everyone. Have a wonderful day.